Hey everybody, welcome back to the Income Property Renovation Series. In a previous episode, I removed these laminate floors to expose the original linoleum tiles stuck to our plywood subfloor. And we're taking those out in today's video. This old linoleum floor in the kitchen and dining room is raised just a little bit from the rest of the hardwood floors that go throughout the house. I want my subfloor to be level for my vinyl plank going down, so getting this out is step number one. I'm trying this four inch wide razor blade scraper that I picked up. If I have a hard time using this alone, I'll also grab the heat gun. This tool is super sharp, it's literally a long razor blade, so I'm hoping it's able to work its way under the tile and separate the adhesive underneath. I should probably mention, I'm not wearing gloves, but you'll see me wearing them throughout the video. Make sure and wear protective equipment. All right, this is working awesome. That's really good news. And it also cleans up any leftover adhesive like this. My goal is to remove all of this flooring without renting a power scraper from Home Depot. I've got about 350 square feet of this tile, which seems like a reasonable task, as long as this adhesive isn't too strong. Each tile is 12 inches by 12 inches, so that means I've only got a few hundred more to go. So that's not good, I already lost an edge. So now I'm gonna try this tool. Zenith was nice enough to send this out to me. It's made for pulling floors. I don't know if it works on this kind, but we'll find out. Oh, this is working good. All right, I'm running into a few nails, but I think this is better than the razor scraper. Okay, hot take, the floor lifter actually worked better than the razor scraper. This is probably gonna be really useful to come back and get any leftover adhesive, but if you have a similar task, check out this tool. This is not a paid endorsement. I'll leave a link to both of these down below. What makes this tool work so well is just this little tab that lifts the flooring up as you push further into it. It has a chisel edge rather than a razor edge, but that's still sharp enough and strong enough to get underneath the tile for now. I kept a couple of five gallon buckets with me to throw the debris into, then I could take those to the trash can. At this point in the project, I was very happy that I didn't rent a power scraper from Home Depot because I was working through these tiles like Pac-Man. My palms were getting a little bit sore, so I cut a couple of pieces of cardboard inserts for my glove. That way, whenever the back of the handle for this scraper butted up against it, it didn't bruise it. As I removed this flooring, I revealed about a two foot panel that's a little bit raised. We'll have to fix this plywood. Awesome. That could not have gone better. Now it's time to take care of the same floors here in the kitchen. The beginning progress here in the kitchen was really similar to the dining room. Each tile wasn't necessarily easy to remove, but they came out with just a little bit of work. It wasn't until I got to the middle of the kitchen that things really started to change. As you can see, they used a ton of adhesive here in the middle of the kitchen. I don't know why, maybe because they were expecting a lot of foot traffic. It is really stuck down right here. All right, so now I'm gonna test the heat gun. I struggled to get good results from using a heat gun. I don't know if it was just the adhesive that I was using. In the past, I've used boiling water on a concrete subfloor to release that adhesive. Okay, then starting to slow down. Some of this adhesive is really stuck on to this bottom layer of vinyl. I'm gonna try screwing on a handle and seeing if a little extra leverage helps me out. So this extra bit of leverage did help, but I didn't have the sturdiest handle. All right, well, I keep bending that ball. I'll need to get one that's more heavy duty. In the meantime, I just kept removing the tiles that I could and skipping past the ones that were too stuck. Okay, progress has completely stopped. This edge on the floor is just glued down too well. I'm starting to think I'm gonna have to rent a power scraper, but before I concede to doing that, I'm gonna start scraping back in the small bathroom where I know some of that tile is already loose. And I'm just gonna see how far I can get and what tile I'm stuck with. I had a plumber replace the galvanized pipes under the house with new PEX lines, and this gave me a good place to start peeling from. The flooring's coming up really good in here, so I'm gonna keep this moving. I'll be sure to repair the hole in the subfloor there in the kitchen before I put down any new flooring, and I was really happy to get the rest of this tile up. I've still got quite a bit to do in this small bathroom. After the new flooring's down, I'm gonna do a shower install, a new corner toilet, and hopefully a custom built out vanity. This is where the toilet used to be, and it's gonna be the new shower. 
Once I got this flooring scraped, I was able to move from the bathroom into that little hallway section where you can get into the garage and back to the other side of the kitchen, where once again, I was stuck. Okay, I'm completely exhausted, but I almost got all of it. There's just this little part right here that I've gotta take care of tomorrow. So far, I've been scraping for two days straight. I should have rented a scraper from the beginning. Lesson learned, see you tomorrow. But really quick, I'd like to give a big thanks to the sponsor of today's episode, Squarespace. If you need a website, online store, or just a custom domain, Squarespace is your one-stop shop. And the best part is you need zero website building experience. And with Fluid Engine, Squarespace's next generation design platform, it's never been easier to unlock your unbreakable creativity. Just start with one of Squarespace's best in class designer templates that look great right out of the gate. And from there, you can customize every aspect with Squarespace's enhanced drag and drop technology on desktop and mobile. There's also no limits to the number of products that you can sell using a Squarespace store, whether that's a physical good, a digital good, or a service product. And if you wanna do transactions in person, Squarespace has got you covered. By connecting the Square card reader to the Squarespace app, you can take payments, manage your inventory, and all of your accounting is up to date online and in person. So to learn more, make sure and follow my link in the description, that's squarespace.com slash modern builds, where you can build out your entire Squarespace site before entering any of your credit card info. And then when it's time to make your new site live, don't forget to use my code, modern builds, for 10% off your first site, store, or domain through Squarespace. Thanks again to Squarespace. Now let's finish getting these floors prepped. I do not want to have to rent a scraper now that we're so close to having this finished. And that is why I brought this. Now growing up, we called it a mutt. If it has another name, I'll put it right here. But basically, it's a heavy, wide, sharp blade that I hope has enough mass behind it to peel away the rest of these tiles. Thanks, Dad, for letting me borrow it. This mutt would have been a great tool to start this project with, and I probably would have gotten to this point a lot quicker without working on my hands and knees as much. It's not like it just peels the tile right away, but I was able to get further with this tool than any others. And I think it's just because of the weight that it has. It's hard work, but it's working. Okay, now I'm gonna try a multi-tool. A scraper attachment on this multi-tool was really effective getting in between the tile, the adhesive, and the subfloor. Then I was able to follow it back up with a pry tool and get whatever section that I had loosened up. It was really funny how this little tiny tool was able to get up tiles that even that big mutt scraper couldn't quite release just because it oscillates. And now the last tool I'm gonna try is this blade for a reciprocating saw. I'll leave a link down below to everything I'm using. This was also a really good deal because pretty much everyone has a Sawzall, but it did do a little more damage than I wanted to the subfloor underneath. Nothing that I couldn't fix and nothing that was too big, but still, something to be aware of. The scraper attachment is pretty much perfect. It's really sharp and wide enough that I'm able to make progress quickly. The only downside is the length of the stroke that a reciprocating saw has. If it only went back and forth about half as far, that would be more convenient and easier to control without damaging the plywood subfloor. There were a bunch of nails in this subfloor that need set just a little bit so that everything was flat. I used a punch and my hammer to take care of that. Now that tools could run smoothly across the surface and joints, I grabbed my razor blade scraper, which came in handy big time here. Even though it wasn't the most useful hand tool for prying up the floors, it was by far the most useful tool for removing any leftover adhesive. In the middle of the kitchen, there were a couple of big blobs of adhesive that I used the oscillating multi-tool and the reciprocating saw with a scraper attachment to take care of. This took down all of our high points and it's smooth enough now that we can put down underlayment and our luxury vinyl plank flooring. So the flooring is out, but our subfloor prep is not complete. I've got a couple of negative spots in the floors and dips in the subfloor panels that I'm gonna fix in the next episode. I appreciate y'all a ton for watching. Make sure and stay tuned and click subscribe. We'll see you on the next one. Concrete, bye everybody. It's Mike's first flip.